This month on Images. Meet two recently honored distinguished alums. Learn why the world needs interior designers. And Chaparral Fitness offers exercise tips to help you stay on top of that New Year's resolution. All of that and more on this edition of Images. Happy New Year from Images. Welcome to the first edition of what promises to be another exciting year at COD. I'm Rio Almaria, admissions representative at College of DuPage. It's hard to believe it's another new year already, but with all that happens at College of DuPage year round, it's easy to see how time flies. In this edition of Images, we'll meet two of this year's College of DuPage Distinguished Alumni Honorees. First, Christopher Kriz recounts his earliest experiences at the MAC, a relationship that shaped his career and one that continues today. Award-winning composer and theatrical sound designer, Christopher Kriz hasn't missed designing a COD production of A Christmas Carol since he first designed the show as a student. He returns to the college as often as possible to design for Buffalo Theater Ensemble and college theater productions, to compose for the chamber singers or lecture to students because he wants to give back. Chris has been designing professionally for 25 years with nearly 400 productions to his credit so far. Chris Chris has really made his mark among people who design sound and compose for theater in the Chicago area. And it's rare that we have the kind of student here who has made as big a splash as Chris has. He is one of the hardest working people I know. I know many people consider him to be one of the most in-demand sound designers in Chicago. I think the, the theater community in Chicago has clearly embraced Chris as a, as a wonderful professional colleague. He's won a Joseph Jefferson Awards, and uh, at one point when I talked to him, he said that he was designing somewhere between 40 and 50 shows a year, which is almost unthinkable that anyone is that creative and also has enough time to do that. It's not unusual to walk into a play and when you look under sound design or, or composed music, you find Chris Chris's name. Of course, the easiest place to hear Chris's music with theater has always been College of DuPage. Chris was in my college chamber singers, the select student choir, but more than that, he took a, such a strong interest and curiosity in everything that he possibly could. So he was the one who was coming to concerts. He was the one who was singing in the chamber singers, and he was the one who was going to theatrical productions. And of course, in the music theory classroom, he was learning about the, the nuts and bolts of how music was put together. His first design actually was on a college theater production that I did. We were doing a production of Midsummer Night's Dream, and I wanted it to be very audience interactive. And I knew he was a music student, but I didn't know he was interested in sound design. And we started talking through the script. And I said, do you want to design this? And he said, really? And I said, yeah, I think this would be a really good thing. He wrote two pieces for the chamber singers while he was a student here. And while that's happened in a few other cases, he wrote at such a high level at that stage. It was, it was pretty amazing to see. So we performed those pieces, we premiered them, and then another choral piece sometime after he left. He was a unique combination of being gifted, of having an immense curiosity, and of, of realizing that here at this place, he had the opportunity to, to take all that in and turn it into something else. He has always been extremely generous about coming back and talking to students, doing workshops. Every two years he has come back to design A Christmas Carol, which was one of his first designs. And uh, when he's come to talk with students, he's always presented the kind of information in the kind of way that I think they found approachable. And what that's done is it's, it's given them some insights into what life after college or DuPage might be like. From the class of 1992, please welcome Christopher Kriz, a 2017 Distinguished Alum. Earlier this afternoon, uh, we had a, uh, a roundtable discussion with uh, some music and theater students. And uh, Lee Kesselman, who you just heard, uh, referred to me as a sponge. When, uh, when I was his student. And that, I think, is pretty accurate. Um, but the best part of that was that there was so much here to absorb. Um, the, my own personal experience here 
was unique, but the thing that made it so wonderful is that there were so many opportunities to, to hear and to uh, engage with all kinds of different music and performances uh, through the professional ensembles that were in, in residence here. Uh, Lee's uh, New Classic Singers, I got to work on premier works uh, by composers um, uh, from all over the world, actually, and uh, working with Buffalo Theater Ensemble with Kenny, Connie Kennedy Howard. Um, the, the Jazz Ensemble, directed by Tom Tallman. Um, the, these are just a few of the things that I uh, uh, experienced almost, almost every day. Um, it afforded me the luxury of experience that I couldn't get anywhere else. And to, to have that kind of experience is uh, something that I will truly always be grateful for. Um, I have had so many wonderful relationships that I have built here. Um, people that were at first my teachers and mentors and now remain friends. Um, I have to uh, point out the name of Richard Holgate, uh, who is the technical director here uh, for the Art Center for many, many years. He was just an extraordinary presence in my life, and I worked uh, with him daily for quite, quite a few years, and he was just the best father figure that I think anyone could ever dream of, and he shaped my, my, uh, my political outlook, my uh, sense of humor, um, and offered <laughs> the most sage advice that I think I've ever received in my life. Um, Lee Kesselman, the director of uh, the Chamber Singers, um, my first music professor, and uh, someone whose influence I, I carry with me every day. Um, he made music he made the exploration of music a joy, and that's a spirit that I carry with me every day. Um, Tom Tallman, uh, director of the Jazz Ensemble, um, you, I'm not even sure if you realize how much you've influenced me. Um, you, you, you've shown me how to be uh, um, someone who understands the importance of doing your homework and not sucking. <laughs> <laughs> um, in every sense, um, that's true. Uh, and lastly, Connie Kennedy Howard. Um, who I first worked with on A Midsummer Night's Dream, as you saw in 1991. Um, and now I'm pleased to say that uh, I'm joining the ranks of Buffalo Theater Ensemble as an ensemble member uh, after all these years. And I'm really excited about it. Um, she took a chance on me, really, on that first show. And it opened up an avenue for me that I didn't even know was there. I was on a path to be a, a music composition student and doing that one show with Connie just opened up this whole world for me and it's a world that I continue to thrive on and it's it's my life right now. It's how it's how I make my living and I wouldn't change a thing about how I got here from there. And I think all of you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you very much. The Interior Design Program at College of DuPage offers students a variety of learning opportunities that match current industry trends and standards. Students are able to explore career interests, strengthen marketable skills, and build a portfolio of work.
there's so much more to interior design than I think people realize. To be a designer means to create a comfortable space for people to enjoy. It lets me use my creativity in a totally different dynamic. I love picking uh, fabrics and putting them together and being like, this works, like this is, this is it. Like, it's like a puzzle piece. I just want people to say wow when they walk into a space that I designed. I like to be able to create spaces that make people feel good. The world needs interior designers to plan, create, improve, and beautify the spaces where people live and work, making them accessible, environmentally friendly, comfortable, and functional. The Interior Design Program at College of DuPage prepares students to work as designers in an exciting and growing profession that is both creative and practical. Dealing with space from raw nothing all the way through to a completed space where people are going to live, work, have fun. We touch everything on the interior of a space. The way that you uh, function in a space actually sets the mood for your entire day. In order for people to lead safe and happy and fulfilled lives, um, if their space works for them, then they work better, they work smarter. So there is a, quite a bit of responsibility interior designers hold. Students can earn an associate degree or one of three certificates, kitchen and bath, lighting, and computer applications. The curriculum has really been tiered, so one level builds on to the next, and by the time you're done, you are able to do a complete project in any number of different areas of practice. Our industry embraces the technical, it embraces the uh, creative, it also embraces the sales aspect. You have to have those interpersonal skills to be able to sell your designs because basically that's what you are doing. You're selling yourself as a designer and you're selling your design project. Hands-on experiences combined with in-depth classroom instruction for the highest quality interior design education in the area. Right now I'm in a few studio classes so that focuses on residential design, commercial design, as well as a professional practice and ethics class which we learn about the business side of interior design and how to interview, creating a resume and a cover letter. I thought it was going to be like, this is really interesting, let's pick out these finishes and materials and stuff. There's so much more that you need to know. Codes, specifications for what's appropriate for certain types of environments. I mean, that's all really essential. We will have students present their ideas informally where we put a bunch of things on desktops and we'll go around and share ideas like you would in a design firm. The teacher will act as a client. She will sit down with us and tell us exactly what she needs, uh, what the space will be used for, what kind of products or materials she was looking for, what things she didn't like, what things she does like. We're very tech savvy, meaning that we come out of this school and know, know how to do our drawings the correct way and how, know how to lay them out and be very organized in that because that's very important when you're in the field because you're working with contractors and developers and engineers. It's not just opening a book, it's hearing a teacher who's done it before and then seeing it out in the industry and if at any time we can take the student to see something actually occurring, we try to do that. I've had people who have gone on field trips who have said, I never thought I would be interested in retail design until I went on that field trip and now I can't imagine doing anything else. Learn skills such as drafting, sustainable design, CAD, space planning and lighting. Advanced studio courses focusing on residential, kitchen and bath, healthcare, restaurant and retail, or office, allow students to build impressive portfolios. In the world of design, it is all about the work. Today's market is competitive, and I think that the ability to build a portfolio that shows uh, your skill set to its utmost is essential. When you look at the student portfolios, they are just there's just a plethora of details and sections, and I think that's what makes architects and designers so apt to have hired these students. We have professionals come and do our portfolio reviews, and they tell me, they tell our dean, that these are as good or better than other portfolio reviews that they've done at other schools. Current and emerging trends are taught by our award-winning faculty of industry professionals dedicated instructors with years of experience. The teachers here are really dedicated to their work 
and the students, and they want the students to succeed. They've all experienced different things, and they're able to share that with us. The professors are absolutely wonderful, very hands-on, and very helpful with all the students. A week doesn't go by when I don't get someone contacting me looking for an intern, looking for an entry-level designer, looking for someone to work on a project. Students really want to be able to get the most uh, value for their dollar, and I think that the College of DuPage offers them that because we have such a core skill set that allows you to be employed with an associate's degree. I am very confident um, to go out there and start my job search. Whether you are preparing for a career in interior design, planning to transfer to a four-year school, or simply updating your skills, Visit us on the web and let College of DuPage help you design your future. Now let's meet our other distinguished alumni, Dillis Gallio. As a critical care nurse, Dillis considered it an honor to help patients navigate life's greatest challenges. As an educator, the COD nursing professor inspires, mentors, and encourages her students to learn, grow, and truly embrace the art of nursing. In fact, at COD, Dillis has been named as Outstanding Advisor and Outstanding Faculty Member. Phyllis is currently in the doctoral program at Benedictine University, which focuses on leadership and values, and spent this summer on sabbatical in Zambia, teaching community health workers assessment skills to promote health in their community. One of the things I love most about Dillis is that she's the best of both worlds. She's one of the most loving, caring, compassionate people on the planet. And at the same time, she is a hard-nosed, evidence-based, results-oriented scientist. I first got to know Dillis when she was hired as a nursing instructor here at College of DuPage. She came to us well prepared. She had a strong nursing background. But another characteristic that uh, was soon to be revealed was her commitment to students. She cared about them. She was compassionate. She would go the extra mile over and over for these students. I met Dillis when she embarked on her PhD journey in values-driven leadership at Benedictine University. She was a student that immediately stood out in every different positive way a student can stand out. And I've had the luxury of not only getting a chance to serve alongside her with her cohort members, to be her instructor, to learn from her, to grow from her, to be the recipient of the generosity that she just so, just humbly displays and gives to all that there's been a special relationship from day one. Dillis's dissertation topic is the nature of high quality relationships between students and instructors that support student success and career success for people in nursing programs. That's a great example of her care for people and her care for performance. She's gone to Africa to help a particular uh, population there and she went to help give medical attention to folks in Zambia. But she worked with a bunch of medical professionals in the area, and her first move was not to go out thinking that she knew everything and begin to help people. Her first move was to enter into relationship with the health providers there, get to know them, visit them in their clinics, visit them in their homes, and say, how can I help you? So out there in our nursing world now, out in DuPage County and on, are all these students who were guided and, and uh, cared about by Dillis, and they remember her. From the class of 1989, please welcome Dillis Gallio, a 2017 Distinguished Alum. This is an amazing group to be uh, with. I am so grateful I am so humbled and so blessed. Um, not too bad for a kid from India who had polio. Uh, my parents were told that I would never walk. So I lead a blessed life. Uh, with that, um, 
there is something uh, that I want you to understand about a noble purpose. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I'm not going to read a book, promise, although uh, my dissertation chair would love that. Um, uh, I, uh, I found a liturgy about uh, scholars and students. Use my studies to further shape my vision of what my place and call in this world might be. Begin to show me where my own deep gladness and the world's deep need might meet. And in that light, let me be mindful, not only of my studies, but also mindful of the needs of my peers and even of my teachers. Let me respond with mercy to the failings of others. Let me be in this school, even in small ways, the bearer of love and the light and reconciliation, which is to say, let me be in humility. Let me be your child, God. All right. With tonight, uh, what I want to tell you is that the most in influential people in my life who came at uh, whatever times they did were like angels. They were my teachers. Uh, going way back, uh, my teacher, Tom Lindblade, with the book People Making from Virginia Satir. The fact that I still remember that name, Tom, is pretty amazing. As an educator, Tom saw in me things that I couldn't. He stood by while I searched for what I wanted to be with my life and what I wanted to do. His letter of recommendation brought tears to my eyes. The trajectory of my life changed due to his loving kindness and support. Uh, not only was I able to walk, Tom gave me wings. When I started to teach here at this college, because it's come full circle, uh, daily, I used to pass a picture of him helping a student paddle a canoe. It inspired me daily. His example of being a kind yet firm instructor inspires me. Marilyn Johnston, my nursing instructor, mentor, friend, and partner in crime, and she knows what that means. Wow, we used to get into trouble. Uh, what a gentle soul. She gave me the example of a mentor, teacher, friend, and healer. Uh, there was laughter through tears and much joy. Ellen Davel, who actually hired me <clears throat> to, do, to be a teacher here. Uh, what's really kind of interesting is that Ellen was on vacation in Indiana, and I was on vacation in Maui. And she called and said, Dillis, could, could you possibly teach for us? Knowing that Ellen was, uh, was really strapped for an educator, I said, oh, what the heck, sure. And uh, that actually changed the course of my life because I have loved all of my nursing students. On to more thank yous. James Gus Gustafson. His class in authentic leadership was a watershed for me. I made radical changes to my life to live authentic and a congruent life. He is one of the most compassionate, loving individuals I have been blessed with. Thank you for your care, your nurturing, your support, and oh my gosh, how many prayers have we had for each other. While I was in Africa, Gus coached me, supported me with his kind words, and his affirmation, because you see, when you're caring for so many people, you can get overwhelmed. His friendship and love has taught me what makes a heart beat. Um, and last but not least, Jim. Jim Ludma. How could I have known that I would meet one of the most influential people of my life during an interview in October 2014? You see, I found out at the last minute there was going to be changes to who interviewed me, and that, uh, that caused me to change which shoes that I was going to wear. <clears throat> Flats, be very boring, and go in. 
His vision for creating a positive, value-driven, his, his vision for creating positive, values-driven leaders uh, is actually infectious and inspiring. I lean on his never-ending support and encouragement. He would check in with me to see how I was during some very dark days, and my answer was, upright. Uh, this was during some of the most tempestuous times in my life. He gave me a safe harbor. What an amazing example of loving kindness and strength. Um, whereas Tom helped me by giving me wings, Tim's helping me to fly or to take flight. I'm forever in your debt, and yes, I'm working on my dissertation. <clears throat> All of these individuals bring their best, share their passion to help people become, they see more, care more, and love more. I have been so blessed to have them in my life. It is my sincere hope that I could lead with their example. By the way, I would be remiss uh, to not mention Judy Carino, my baby sister. There are no words to describe the bond between us, sort of a soul sister. She has looked out, watched over, loved, and cheered me on. Um, <clears throat> If everybody had a person like Judy Carino in their life, we would all be unstoppable. Uh, when I have been out of the country and not available, I want to say thank you to her husband and her children because he steps in and calls her Juju uh, and will text her as though he's me. Uh, <clears throat> all in all, uh, in uh, sincere humility, uh, if it wasn't for my God, I wouldn't be upright and I wouldn't be here. Thank you. He's the source of my strength and hope. I'm so blessed to have the noble purpose of teaching. And I am so thankful for every life that's brought into, brought into my circle of tiny influence. Because you see, these students, they're out there being healers and nothing could be better than that. Thank you. To help motivate you, here's a quick how-to tip on a core strengthening exercise, the plank. Plank. Set up for the plank by getting a mat and laying down on your stomach. To start the exercise, prop your torso up on your elbows and your feet up on your toes. Keeping yourself completely straight, hold this position for as long as possible, or for a predetermined time. That's all the time we have for this edition of Images. We hope you enjoyed this program from College of DuPage. Also, you can watch past episodes of Images on demand by visiting our website at cod.edu.